Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started then. Um, we are still waiting on one of our speakers, but he should be logging on momentarily. Um, and um, if he's not here when it's his turn, I'll just keep moving forward and we'll come back to him. How does that sound? Um, before we start to, I wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping items. The first one is uh, for those of you attending today that need continuing education credits, there is a survey at the end that is mandatory for you. You have to attend the entire program and then you do need to complete that survey at the end in order to get your continuing education credits. We will be emailing them to you. It's going to take us a full week to send those out. So make sure that you do your evaluation today and then just be patient while you're waiting on those certificates to come out to you. If you don't receive the uh, survey at the end, it just should pop up. You can either email myself or Marty and we can send you the link. Again, those have to be finished and completed today in order for you to get your continuing education credits. So hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Warshawski and you are here for Caregiving Resources. Seniors Blue Book has partnered with the Area Agency on Aging of North Te Central Texas and and today's program is going to be on technology designed to support caregivers. Um, our panelists today include uh, Tavis Schriefer, Sean Mitra, Brandy Bailey, Bonnie Resnick Drussel, and Miss Susan Rogers. Next slide, please. And Marty, will you please send Tavis the uh, link again? Yes, I will. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about um, caregiving technology. We're going to have a brief introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about telephone technology, caregiving voice technology, emergency response systems and medication management, tablet so socialization and interactive technology, and transportation technology. We're going to have a Q&A from all of our caregiving panelists. And then we're going to have some closing remarks. Next slide, please. So our panelists, um, our first panelist that's going to be speaking for us today is Tavis Schriefer. He's with Telecom. He's the CEO and founder at Telecom. And he has been a caregiver for his mother in the past. And that's um, kind of what brought him to, to found or co-found Telecom with his wife and a couple of other people. And it's a safe phone service to help people stay safely connected with family and friends while prolonging their independence. Sean Mitra is the founder and CEO of BrioCare. He's passionate about voice technology to empower seniors for an active, healthy, and purposeful life. Our next speaker will be Ms. Bonnie, Dres Bonnie Resnick Drustel, and she's with Family Care Services. Um, she helps family caregivers and their loved ones at home through the use of, a, of personal emergency response systems and the newest technology of cellular medicine dispensers. Ms. Susan Rogers is with McNair Dallas Law. And Susan has, Susan has many talents. Um, and one of them is she has been using the grand pad for her own family to help them to uh, be connected. And she has some thoughts on how it can help older adults and caregivers, caregivers as well. She is also the vice president of the Dallas Area Gerontological Society. And then we have Ms. Brandy Bailey. And Brandy is the Director of Strategic Growth at Senderide. Senderide is a technology platform that provides affordable HIPAA compliant transportation customized to the needs of the rider. And they also provide transparency with audio recordings of the ride and route tracing. So we're going to uh, be able to, to visit with all of them and see what they have to share with us for our caregiving resources. Next slide, please. 
So I want to talk a little bit about meeting the physical and psychosocial needs of older adults and caregivers with technology. Um, the focus of today's program is to promote an improved understanding of the technology resources available to assist caregivers with the goal of supporting the increased physical and psychosocial needs of our older adults and their caregivers. Assisting older adults to meet these basic needs includes meeting not only their physical needs, but also meeting their psychosocial needs. Psychosocial needs are really their emotional and mental well-being. Everyone has a need to feel worthwhile, loved, secure, in their relationships with others, and having this need at least partially met contributes to their overall health and well-being. According to the Oxford Dictionary, psychosocial means the interrelation of social factors and individual thoughts and behaviors. So addressing their psychosocial needs means addressing their mental, social, and their physical needs. Some of the common, some of the common psychological issues affecting older adults may include anxiety, depression, delirium, dementia, personality disorders, and substance abuse. Some common social and emotional issues that may involve the, the loss of autonomy, grief, fear, loneliness, financial constraints, and the lack of a social network, especially during this time of social distancing and isolation. Some of the technology we're going to hear about today can assist with meeting these needs and in turn help promote comfort and dignity of the older adults that we are caring for. And next slide, please. And Tavis, this is going to be your first slide. Yeah. So I don't have any link to get in. I haven't. Okay. Um, give me a moment and I'll send it to you myself. One moment, okay? okay. Thanks. Marty, can you send me Tavis's link? It's not letting me in since the webinar is, is, is already underway. Can you send, can you forward him the one you received by chance? I can, I don't think it would let him log in though with it. Can we invite him through the participants tab and then promote that, him? That, 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 that's, that's why I just put, I, I was gonna leave the, this on, um, on with the slides because I can do that if, I, if, if you guys just hold on just one second, thanks. Okay, so I sent him a link, so hopefully he will be on momentarily. So I know we have some comments here. Let me just take a look at them while we're waiting to see if any of them can be answered right now. We do have an attendee, this is for our speakers. We have an attendee who um, would like us to include resources for older adults who are, who are vision or hearing impaired or both. They find it's particularly challenging as they work with aging adults, especially those with more severe impairments and who are increasingly isolated as a result. So as you're doing your presentation, if you would remember to include comments about that, that would be appreciated. And hopefully Tavis will be here momentarily. There he is. Okay, so Marty, you have to go into the attendees and make him a panelist. Kathleen, it looks like we also have a question about um, whether the, a copy of the slides will be available to participants. 
So the copy of the slides is already available to participants. Um, I believe that Marty sent it out as a link, but if you go to seniorsbluebook.com, so it's sbbdallas.com, there is an article on there. And I'll, while Tavis is talking, I will post that link for you all in the chat and you'll be able to just click on it and you'll have a copy of all of the slides from today already. Just so you know, there's a link to that at the bottom of the um, email you should have all received this morning, one hour prior to the um, to the event. If you go to the bottom of the page, there's a link to the, to, to the slides. Perfect. All right, let me just see if, um, Marty, can you unmute Tavis so that he can talk? Okay. All right, and it, can you, can you can, hear me? If you wanna go ahead, that would be great. All right, I apologize for being late. For some reason I had, uh, I had it down at 1.30 for some weird reason. So, um, so hi everybody, uh, I'm Tavis Schrieffer with Telecom. Um, and uh, you know, every day there's a, a new technology available to support family caregivers. Uh, many of these focus on health or well-being or social isolation or even uh, psychological support. Uh, and it provides that either to the caregiver or to their loved one. Uh, as caregivers ourselves, or as those who advise family caregivers on a routine basis, oftentimes we come across these new technologies uh, or even old technologies with a new twist. And so we share it with our network or social media or even our clients. So I wanted to take a few minutes and you know, just go over a, a few things to show you that of the technologies that I found useful and hopefully that you can find useful as well. Slide, or do I tell you when to change the slides? Okay. <laughs> so, um, so my mom carried around a flip phone and a camera all everywhere she went. She loved taking pictures and every, everything she wanted, you know, she always wanted to uh, send these pictures to everybody else. Now, of course, the camera had a memory card and she was always confused about how to get them onto the computer and how to email them and how to share them. And, you know, I thought to myself as an iPhone user, I have the perfect solution, right? Uh, I can get her an iPhone, she can do her email, she can text, she can take pictures and, you know, and talk on the phone all in one package. Well, it didn't quite turn out that way. Um, but, you know, she did learn to use the smartphone to make calls, to take pictures, over 10,000 of them in two years time. Um, but she always wanted to try and do more. And she ended up getting really frustrated by the overwhelming features and capabilities that the smartphone brought along with it. So, the lesson I learned was, you know, when you're looking at purchasing or recommending technology solutions, you want to make sure that, that the senior understands the reasons for these technologies and the benefit that it brings to them. You also want to spend the time up front to explain how to use this technology at a pace that allows them to understand. So this will help to increase their own self-confidence and their motivation to use that technology moving forward. And always remember, simpler is better. Um, so here's a few technologies that you may not be aware of that might be helpful to your seniors or family caregivers. Next slide. So this is Adaptafit. Adaptafit is a Texas company that sells magnetic kits that allows people to sew these magnet fasteners into their loved one's existing clothing. It allows uh, shirts and pants to snap together within seconds, and they give people the ability to wear the clothes that they love, but still have the independence to get them on and off with ease. And you can check these out at adaptafitclothing.com for more information on those kits. Next slide. So Snap Power, they create light switches. Uh, well, they make light switches and power outlet plates that, uh, that have night lights built in. And there's a lot of other companies that do some of these things as well. But one of the things I really liked about Snap Power is the ease in installation. All you do is unscrew the plate and take it off and just snap their plate right on. There's no wiring or anything. And the nightlight is great in the dark. And it's not too bright to be 
uh, uh, to be a problematic. Next slide. So more and more, more and more family caregivers are installing wireless cameras at their parents' house uh, or even in the senior living uh, apartments. And there's a just a plethora of cameras available out there right now. But what I really like about the Blink camera is that it runs for like six months off of two AA batteries. This allows you to place it anywhere in the room uh, or even outside of the home as well. And it allows the caregivers to remotely monitor using a smartphone app. The indoor ones even have two-way audio in case you need to talk back and forth with, your, with the loved one. Next slide. Um, so many seniors turn up the volume on their television so that they can not only hear it better, but also so that they can try and understand it more clearly. Well, Zvox was actually the inventor of the soundbar, which is now available you know, by every major brand out there. But what makes Zvox's AccuVoice unique is that they are using hearing aid technology in their soundbar. They're able to separate the background music from the voices themselves and make the voices louder and more clear. So while lowering the background sound and, and music, so by doing this, it makes it a lot easier to understand. Now, my father has tinnitus and hearing loss, and so he's been relying on closed caption for, for years for his, uh, for his TV watching. With this speaker, he's actually been able to turn off closed caption and actually can enjoy watching TV a, a lot better than he has in years. Next slide. So, Many times, seniors need tech support that's not family or friends. Sometimes families need tech support that, uh, that for their parents, uh, just for your own sanity that isn't you. Uh, so with that, you know, Geek Squad has a great offering with their total tech solution service plans. So for a low cost of 200 bucks a year, uh, they provide unlimited phone support and they provide a reasonable in-home visit uh, rate as well to do those troubleshooting and installations for seniors. And nation they are nationwide, plus they, they are specializing in home tech for seniors as well. Now I was also gonna talk about a local DFW company, TechNow, unfortunately, uh, they didn't survive COVID, it looks like. So um, they are no longer around at the moment. So sorry about that. Um, so the Apple Watch. Well, you know, everyone knows the popularity of, of the Apple Watch, but some are not aware that it does actually monitor for falls and can automatically call for help as well. Uh, if you have the cellular version, uh, you can also make calls as a senior, they can make calls directly on the watch without having the iPhone anywhere around it, call and receive calls. Um, as a caregiver for a senior with the cellular version of the iPhone watch, or the, uh, sorry, the Apple watch, the caregiver can also track the location of the seniors without the iPhone even being around them as well. Now there is an alternative like the Freedom Watch uh, from Medical Guardian. Uh, it's a simpler solution uh, for the senior themselves and it has a much lower initial cost. But after 12 months of service, it actually becomes more expensive than the Apple Watch. So that was just a few of the things, you know, and uh, hopefully that was helpful. But at the end of this, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. So I want to briefly talk about technology, older adults and caregivers. Um, although they might find it difficult at first, the older generation are beginning to use modern technology. Some of the statistics I found were that uh, internet use in the 65 to 74 year old age group has increased to 78% in 2017. Uh, as far as mobile phones and tablets go, 27% are using those. And at least 41% of older adults over 75 years of age have a social media account. I thought that was a really inter interesting statistic. And in this photo, you, no, go back one. 
there you go. In this photo, you'll actually see these are my parents. That's my mom and dad. And we were actually at a wine tasting. And the three younger uh, people at the table were all sitting there across from them, watching the two of them on their technology. They miraculously had Wi-Fi. They had to check their emails. And so uh, my mother's in her early 70s and my father is 78 years old. And the two of them thought their technology was more important than my daughter, who is 26 at the time. Um, so uh, um, I think that we, although there's a lot of older adults who find technology to be um, a little bit confusing and maybe um, are a little afraid of it, I think that we're going to see more and more people using it as we move forward, especially with the internet. Next slide. Um, and as we talk about the internet, um, one of the best places that you can find caregiving resources in the Dallas area online is through Seniors Blue Book. You can search online for all types of um, services and different different types of caregiving um, amenities and services that are there. You go to sbbdallas.com or seniorsbluebook.com. We are a national company, so you can find them for places other than the Dallas area. Next slide, please. We also have educational pieces to help with, um, with caregiving and older adults. So we have our educational webinars, such as this one. We do post the recordings of them afterwards so that you can read those. We have educational articles and we also have our, uh, we've added recently senior care spotlights so you can learn about other services that are available for the older adults. Next slide please. And then to complement the online pieces that we have, we all know that older adults really love to feel, see, smell, and touch um, their print editions. And so Seniors Blue Book does come as a print edition and it's the only comprehensive caregiving resource in the Dallas area. Next slide, please. So now Tavis is gonna talk to us a little bit about telephone technology that's available for caregivers. All right, well, hi again. Uh, so, uh, so I'm with Telecom uh, and since I missed the beginning of the meeting, uh, I, I apologize. I don't know if anybody uh, already heard something about me or anything. But so I was my mom's caregiver for five years. And that along with 28 years experience in the telecommunications and consumer products industry led to the creation of Telecom, where we provide the safest phone service for families living with Alzheimer's and other dementias. Now, like the last presentation, I'll spend a few uh, minutes showing a few different telephone related products and describe what we've learned about these over the past four years. Next slide. So there's a considerable number of choices out there uh, for telephone solutions and caregivers, you know, to, with, for caregivers to choose them and they can quickly become overwhelming. Uh, oftentimes caregivers choose what they themselves feel most comfortable with or make a decision without fully being able to appreciate the pros and cons associated with it. So looking back on my previous story, I mentioned earlier about my mom and the iPhone, you, you wanna carefully identify the features that your loved one needs versus too many unnecessary features that may prove problematic. Uh, to reiterate, the simpler option is often the better option. Next slide. So when it comes to cell phones, many times caregivers simply get a phone for their family member and they add it to their own family plan for as low as 10 bucks a month. Now this is often the easiest and the cheapest thing to do and depending on the telephone itself. Um, it, it also tends to be the least complicated, or I'm sorry, flip phones themselves tend to be the least complicated if the senior is only using it for voice calls. Uh, Android phones can certainly be cheaper than iPhones, but they can also be more complicated for many seniors to use. Now, when it comes to a senior-friendly uh, phone solution, the two main choices in the industry are the Jitterbug by Great Call and consumer cellular. So Great Call has their five-star service that seniors can, uh, can call if they need help without having to actually call 911. 
this is a, similar to a PERS device like Life Alert, but of course it's not as simple as a single button, you know, around a pendant around your neck. Um, but they they can also they also have an app for the the caregivers, the family caregivers for their smartphones. So they can receive emergency notifications, they can track their loved one's whereabouts, and they can show uh, when the loved one's phone battery is getting low to remind them to plug it in so it doesn't run dead. Um, when it comes to, you know, the one thing, so the one thing to keep in mind with Great Call is they have no scam or telemarketer protection whatsoever on them, on their services. Um, with Consumer Cellular, uh, they, give, they give caregivers uh, the ability to buy a phone from them or they can bring an unlocked phone to the service instead. So they can bring their own home phone, uh, their own phone along the way. So the flip phone from Consumer Cellular, the one, the Dora one, uh, has a really simplified interface to it. Uh, it's great for seniors. It also has an amplified speaker. So it's very popular. Um, if, if you want an iPhone for, for as, a, as a caregiver, if you want an iPhone for your loved one, Consumer Cellular is certainly the way to go. It, especially, you know, if you're having a hand-me-down phone. Uh, to save on money as well. So Consumer Cellular does not have any of the caregiver features uh, that uh, Great Call has, and nor do they provide any scam or telemarketer protection either. Uh, but if you do have a smartphone through them, of course, you can take advantage of the third-party scam protection subscriptions that are out there. So both companies provide service for active seniors. That means they aren't really designed for seniors with cognitive challenges. So our company, Telecom, will be coming out with a dementia-friendly cell phone later this year. It'll be competitively priced uh, and caregivers can add, it can add it to their own cellular service as an add-on for whatever carrier they have. Our service will actually block the telemarketer calls and scam calls and provide the support for the late night and the repeat dialing calls similar to what we already do with landline services. So many times, Caregivers don't even think about landline solutions, but there's many advantages to landline phone service for seniors, especially when they're at home or in a senior living. Um, if, uh, even more so if they have some cognitive issues. Over 70% of seniors continue to have landline phone service, even though they may have cell phones as well. Next slide. So, Many times caregivers uh, aren't aware of, of captioning phones. So for seniors with hearing loss, captioning phones can really be a great advantage. Um, so what happens with a caption phone is it, it is free. Uh, it, what people don't realize, I apologize, what people don't realize is with caption phones is the, it's free, both the hardware and the service. It's paid for out of those uh, taxes and fees that we see on our own cell phone bills. Now, uh, there's two major brands, Caption Call and Clear Captions. There's other brands as well, but these are the larger ones. Um, they require both landline phone service as well as internet access. And they use a combination of machine and human captioning that allows the senior to see the caption while hearing the other party on the call. So this can also uh, allow them to save the text to refer back to later, sort of like a one-sided call transcription. And it can be really helpful for caregivers to be able to go back and look at what the, what the, the doctor actually said uh, to the loved one versus what the loved one recalls and is saying back to them. Next slide. Now for a lot of caregivers, Simple, uh, a simpler landline telephone can provide a much better experience for their loved ones. There are several types of senior friendly brands out there that produce amplified handsets for easier understanding. One thing to be careful of is that a lot of the cordless phones have a feature called call block. And while this feature was made with good intentions, um, it often becomes problematic for seniors and caregivers. 
if the senior accidentally pushes the call block button while on the phone with a friend, like with their cheek or something like that, then that person can never call that senior again. And they don't know why. Unfortunately, today's scammers come in from all these different call numbers, a different number every time. And it renders that call block feature practically useless. So we actually recommend to our customers that they turn off those call block features because they become more problematic than help. Now there's also several phones out there with simpler layouts and functions for seniors with cognitive issues, uh, especially photo dialing capabilities. For seniors with Alzheimer's and dementia, these phones can allow the senior to continually use the telephone for a significantly longer period of time. Next slide. So there's a huge number of caregivers that are caring for loved ones with cognitive challenges. There's over 8 million seniors with dementia in the US today. That's 17% of the population. Uh, and it's growing by nearly 1,900 a day. 81% of them live at home and 19% of them live in senior living communities. Next slide. And these are exactly the caregivers that we service. So caregivers love telecom service because it stops the phone related issues associated with dementia. It blocks all of the bad calls, both incoming and outgoing. Uh, the only time the phone rings for the senior is when it's a friend or a family member calling. We also stop all of the late night and repeated calls and even the inappropriate 911 calling in senior livings. Next slide. So at the heart of our service is the caregiver app. Family caregivers subscribe to our phone service as a replacement to their existing service. And then the loved one, the, the caregiver manages the loved one's service remotely using a caregiver app. By putting the caregiver in charge like this, we're able to manage the features and the benefits of the service directly. Next slide. So calls from trusted contacts pass straight through to the senior while suspicious calls and known bad guys are blocked immediately. Our service is the only one that blocks 100% of these telemarketer and scammer calls. Next slide. And that's a big problem. There's over $36 billion being defrauded from seniors annually. 70% of that involves the telephone. 18% of that actually is a friend or a family member or even a, a ex-paid caregiver. So it's a big problem. And those false 911 calls in the senior livings, they put a strain on EMS resources and the senior living staffs themselves. And they also result in fines to the families many times. So telecom is the only phone service that actually stops all of this. Next slide. So we've handled over one and a half million calls so far. And this is, these are the figures from our own customers uh, of what we see. 24% of seniors, of the, our end user seniors, uh, that are in senior living are actually attempt unnecessary 911 calling. 34% of them are making these late night disruptive calls and 28% of them are making these repeated calls. Some of them 70 times a day to the same, to the same caregiver. So the bottom line, oh, next slide. The bottom line is that we stop all of those bad calls, both incoming and outgoing. And that's about 62% of the calls that the senior makes during the day. So that's just a quick overview of some of the telephone technologies that are available. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions about that or any other technology that you'd like to ask about that I didn't talk about. Thanks a lot. Next slide, please. So next we're going to have Sean Mitra with BrioCare talk to us a little bit about voice technology. Sure. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, Marty, can you put it in a, a slideshow mode, please? He has some transitions in there. Yeah. Mark. In, it needs to be in there. Yeah, market. yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you can be on the first slide before this one. Yes. 
This can I'm, you be on the I'm sorry. I'm having an issue with the advancing in full slide mode. That's why we have it in this mode. Sorry about that. Oh, oh okay, okay. All right, that's fine. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Sean Mitra. I'm the founder, CEO of BrioCare. Uh, we are headquartered in uh, Frisco, Texas, right here in the Dallas uh, area. And uh, so there, there are a lot of companies. And personally, my background is uh, I've been a caregiver to my, uh, a remote caregiver to my mom and uh, has spent, uh, 24, 25 years in a um, lot of digital technologies, a lot of the new cutting edge technologies. And I was looking at all the new stuff coming out from Amazon, Google, like Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant. And uh, we felt uh, there were a lot of reports like, uh, you know, in future, a voice will be a very nice interface for uh, older adults. And we felt, hey, is there a way we can use this new technology uh, to connect and empower the caregivers and older adults so we can help them age in place, continue to live in the comfort of their own homes while providing peace of mind to the caregivers. So that's really our focus. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Now, uh, we all know social isolation and loneliness is a huge challenge. And more so now, post COVID, it's become a, even a bigger challenge. Loneliness and isolation is as lethal as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Just imagine the amount of damage it will have on your cognitive faculties and also on your cardiovascular faculties. So this is a big challenge that we are trying to resolve. Second, most family caregivers are anxious and stressed as there's no effective way to support remote parents. The only options today we have are mostly text-based, mobile app-based, or just you know, directly calling them. Now, our parents who want to live independently, they do want to be supported, but at times it can be a little overwhelming when they receive multiple phone calls, uh, reminding and you know, nudging them to do certain things. Next slide, please. So is there a way we can help our older adults live a lot more a connected and less lonely life well, and the caregivers uh, you know, having peace of mind because they are now much more integrated uh, with remote care. So this is where BrioCare comes in. BrioCare uses the best of mobile technology that it has to offer, and also the voice AI technology, which is smart voice technology from Amazon Alexa and Google. And we also leverage a lot of the good companionship content, which is available in YouTube, uh, Amazon and Google, and we allow it to be personalized for every senior. Next slide, please. So essentially what BrioCare is, is a tool for the family caregivers, but it's a voice first platform that allows remote caregivers, whether family or professional caregivers to provide care, personalized companionship and connection for older adults. And Later on, I'll explain how we can integrate this with a lot of uh, you know, home care systems and other systems, even some of the smart uh, home devices, uh, smart uh, health devices uh, to provide a much, uh, much more proactive and comprehensive care. Next slide, please. So essentially what we have is there is a mobile app which is with the caregivers and it can be used by multiple caregivers and you can, you can create, so we give like four uh, self-care routines uh, today. Uh, we have team members with neuroscience background and uh, cardiovascular health, uh, public health background. So these are the four self-care routines that we provide, dementia care, diabetes care, hypertension care, and general wellness. These are still more self-care, not necessarily getting into the health care, but you can use these templates to get started. And then you can just customize and every voice alert, every voice reminder, every care nudge that you have throughout the day for your remote parent, they don't, you know, sometimes with text or email, they might not notice it, but here the speaker proactively will speak to them. So this is a proprietary patented, patented technology that we have that we use for self-care routines where, you know, proactively, uh, these uh, these uh, care nudges and alerts will be heard by our older adults wherever they are. So the you know the family caregiver or the professional caregiver 
he or she could be uh, you know in a different city uh, let's say you know you are in chicago and your uh, you know your uh, uh, parent is in uh, tucson arizona or southern florida somewhere uh, you know you can you can really stay connected and still be an integral part of remote care uh, by using this combination of a mobile app with an amazon alexa next slide please what we also do is for the personalized companionship we offer a uh, uh, a choice of let's say in music we offer like 15 different options similarly for trivia memory games health tips spiritual and then you choose okay the caregiver uh, can just choose that okay you know these are the three uh, which are our preferred for us, you know for your parent or for the older adult and when they say alexa start brio care uh, they actually so brio care knows that this device belongs to this senior and then it you can just hear your personalized music your personalized trivia memory games uh, podcast etc so we look at a lot of the best companionship content which is relevant and good for older adults uh, so they can lead a much more engaged life throughout the day uh, and then uh, we provide options uh, and it's already integrated inside the alexa uh, skill so you know when you talk to alexa these are all skills like if you call uber or dominos or whatever Uh, so you know in brio care skill this is already uh, integrated inside that so if you look at these two slides that i just showed essentially what we're doing is uh, we, we there is a uh, you know a daily routine that you can create and a routine for older adults is extremely extremely helpful from their health standpoint just they are a lot more active and uh, uh, engaged Uh, so th- these two things uh, help us uh, you know offer that uh, connected and engaged living next slide please so this is just a summary of a high level uh, what are the five main features we have in our solution today uh, the first i talked about the self care routines and then you can also of course uh, you know customize and change them uh, personalized companionship we also have a lot of health and safety tips so Uh, tips around nutrition about on fall prevention how to avoid telemarketing scams uh, uh you know various health and safety tips so whenever you say alexa start brio care uh, the senior or the older adult doesn't know uh, what tip they're going to get but you know we we share a tip and we want to continue to reinforce this good uh, healthy and safety tips so that it actually impacts and improves their quality of life we also have uh, medication reminders medication refill alerts so alexa will automatically remind you uh, because you know a lot of times you don't want to you know want to make sure that they take the medications on time and there are multiple medications uh, and it can get very confusing so using our technology you know on the mobile app you just set it up and it takes seconds you know in seconds you can set it up for months okay and uh, when it is time for whichever medication it alexa will come up automatically and will remind you uh, for that we also have uh, medication refill alerts uh, it also sends a text message and an email to the caregiver wherever they are so if they are in some other town or city uh, because we are using a combination of the mobile tech with amazon alexa uh, we are able to provide this uh, unique experience and the last thing that we have to, sorry sorry if you can go back <laughs> and the last thing that we have here is uh, check ins and daily report Uh, the best part is all of these things for the senior they just use their voice so everything on the senior side is just voice and single family caregiver or multiple family caregivers can have the same app and uh, you know uh, manage these things remotely and our focus is more on empowerment and connection not so much on monitoring uh, the check ins and daily report like we do a morning check in and every day in the evening there is a daily report where we ask 6 uh, to 7 standard questions and the the reply uh, plus what all the seniors did uh, the older adult did during the day using amazon alexa it goes back to the caregiver as a daily report so that's that's the you know four i mean the five main features that we have in our solution today we are a fairly young company using a new technology next slide please and we wanted to make sure that we design something which is uh, very easy to scale very easy to adopt for our customers and also it should be very uh, affordable so uh, for us you know you just download the uh, you know app from app store or uh, google play 
and uh, it works with any of the standard Alexa device. We have launched the product for Amazon Alexa. Uh, we will be launching shortly for the Google Assistant version also. And uh, like I said, it's very easy to adopt. You just download the app and uh, within 15 to 20 minutes, you can be set up and you can be you know, uh, in connected and uh, starting to support your uh, remote uh, parent. Next slide, please. There's a little bit of an eye chart here, uh, but this just shows at a very high level on the left hand side. If you see that's the elders home, the older adults home. Uh, so you have, it could be a smart speaker. We can you know, integrate it with smart health devices. So your uh, glucometer readings or blood pressure readings, and it'll actually speak to the senior. So they also know uh, what's going on. Okay. And uh, sorry. And on the right hand side, you can see there are a lot of different uh, options where we can uh, integrate with home care and health plan services. Uh, so that's really the platform. The next slide, please. Yeah, so our model is a monthly subscription model. The introductory price that we have is just $10 a month. Okay. And uh, we believe we, in future, we will, uh, we are also looking at uh, bundling this type of a service, our technology with some home care companies. So they can offer more of a remote care uh, type option. And the segments we are focused on, of course, remote family caregivers, home care companies, health and long-term care insurance companies. Next slide. Yeah. So there are three uh, market trends that uh, BrioCare is leveraging. One, of course, we all know there is a strong desire for older adults to age in place. 93% uh, of them would like to age in place. Uh, so we help and support that. Second is... Uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, a, a big adoption of smart speakers and we will see more and more as time goes by because, you know, you will talk to your refrigerator, you will talk to your car and it will become very natural for us to have a voice interface and our systems allows us to uh, offer a voice first uh, senior care platform. And also the other important thing is uh, more and more care is moving to homes and away from acute settings like hospitals. Uh, so we believe uh, with our platform and the solution that we have, uh, we will uh, you know, tie up more and more with home care companies and some of the other uh, long-term care type companies. Uh, so you are able to provide a continuous care across uh, different settings uh, using a solution like this. Next slide. Thank you. And uh, our motto is uh, to bring the world to seniors' life and life to the seniors' world. And uh, that's our mission, and we continue to work on that. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Our next speaker is going to be Ms. Bonnie Resnick Drussel. And Bonnie is going to talk to us about emergency response systems and medication management systems as well. Bonnie? Okay, first of all, it's Destrel. Destrel, thank you. You made me sound like a pastry. All right, hello everyone. I am so glad to be here. I want to go over some things first, um, just so you have a, an idea of how important it is to have ball technology and tracking technology and medicine compliance. One of the things that we sometimes forget is that one in every four senior will fall in a year. Every sec 11 seconds, excuse me, an older person is in the emergency room. And every 19 minutes, an older person dies from a fall. Falls are the leading cause of fatal in uh, injury and the most common cause of non-fatal trauma-related hospital emissions. Now, we can sometimes prevent these falls, which is very important. Um, caregivers, care managers going in and actually walking through a home and giving them clear paths, because you'd be surprised how many of them fall just because of runs, cords, etc. So that can maybe be prevented, but they're still going to fall. Falls re um, resulted in 2.8 million injuries including over 800,000 hospitalizations and 27,000 deaths. Unfortunately, a lot of these deaths and injuries are due because no one saw them. You know, everyone can't wait to get to their home. They think their home is safe. But if you fall, no one sees you. No one knows you're there. 
So that's why it is so important to get some sort of device if you live alone. And it has nothing to do with age. Anyone can fall. It's just when you get older, you have a greater chance. Now the PERS, which is the Personal Emergency Response System, has gone through many, many developments, uh, starting out actually with Life Alert and Philips Lifeline. Um, and I fall and I can't get up, I'm sure all of you remember that. But those devices started out with our analog landlines. Now, what is an analog landline? That is a, a, um, a phone line that actually has its own power source. Unlike when you get AT&T and you have a phone line, it works off power that way and then through the internet, an analog provides its, prop, its own power. Throughout the United States, our emergency systems are still analog because if anything happened to the power, there would be no way for our government's hospitals to communicate. So these were the analog types of machines for Lifeline and for Life Alert originally. Then they took the same, which looks the same that I'm showing you. This also works on the new AT&T lines, the virtual lines, which are not analog, which if you have in a senior's home, you have to make sure there are battery backups because if the power goes off, they don't have a telephone. So these will work with them. There are some homes that don't have good cell signals. They will not have good cell signals. Whitesboro, for example, you can go two feet in one direction and that whole block doesn't have cell service. So they still rely on an analog or this type of phone line. Now, I get a lot of questions. Why do we have lighted dials? And I'm gonna show you a few of them. Sometimes our wonderful seniors won't wear the button and they know something's wrong. And if they can see a light, there is a chance they might actually find the device and push it. So that's why they have a light on them. Now this type of device then migrated to, and I'm gonna show you a totally different device. This was our first 3G, 4G, and they come across all different types, whether it's mobile health, it's very interesting if you look at our industry and if you really look at what the devices look like, they're just rebranded. You only have maybe five or six out there. And then all the different companies put their name on it. So they're very similar. But what makes the biggest difference is the call center. If you don't have a call center that is active and fully functional, then the person pushing the button won't get any help. So this, of course, no phone line. It works on a cell signal. What's the bad thing about this? Have you ever had a phone call that dropped? So if a phone call does drop with something like this, the call center will try to reach you by calling your line or responders. Why people really like these devices and why hospitals and senior centers at 911 like these devices is that they had an interface. So instead of getting a 911 call where the senior is afraid of the dark or something else, it was able to go to a call center that could hear what was going on, say, do you want your daughter? Yeah, I would prefer my daughter. So it was allowing us to direct the calls from that 911 overload to the person that actually needs them. Sometimes, those false 911 calls were actually because they were lonely. So now they get to talk to the call center or sometimes us because we will have the call center notify us if it's in that type of indication where they're having night terrors, we'll get on the phone and talk to them. So we're saving a problem, lowering their anxiety and filling a need. Now there are all different types of buttons. So you have your wristbands. The wristbands, though, a lot of people, you know, go, oh, yeah, dad wants the watch, mom wants the watch. Well, as we get older, our wrists get very thin, and most of them are hypoallergenic rubber. What happens when you put rubber against your skin and it's warm out there? You perspire, and then it starts to rub. So they're not my favorite devices. Sometimes we have no choice, and they want a watch. You have to provide them a watch. 
What's really great about the neck ones is number one, they're lighter. And number two, many cases, once they'll put it on, they're more apt to keep it on. Because what's the first thing that most seniors do when they go to bed, just from habit, they take their watch off. So they take their watch off, their bladders aren't the same, they're in a hurry to go to the bathroom, and they fall on their way to the bathroom and that watch is sitting on the coffee table or the nightstand. You have a greater chance of them wearing these. If they don't wear them, they're not there when they need them. There are different types of fall detections. Um, one of my favorites was Lifeline, Lifeline's alert response. I still like that the best of all of them that have come out is that the technology has changed now and I'm still waiting for something to equal that button in the need that we need now. But we do have these different um, fall alert buttons that actually signal in when the person falls. It has an altimeter which, me which measures the distance and the impact. So when it feels that you have fallen, and I'm going to show you another machine, so I'm trying to go fast with the time. It actually sends a signal here like you pushed your button. But the call center can see that it's a fall. So if they see a fall indication and they come through to speak to you, and you're not answering, and they know that the button went off on its own, they know that it's a catastrophic incident. And so they're going to first call your phone, just in case you're by it, then they're going to call 911, then your responders. So that's the biggest difference between a fall alert and a regular button. The fall alert, they know something's happened. Now, let's say you did fall and they come through the machine. They're not going to call 911 immediately because you might say, I fell, but I'm already up. I'm fine. Then it's okay. But we have found that sometimes people will fall. They're not hurt. They forget they have their button on and the button goes off and the machine talks to them and they'll say, hey, Bonnie, are you okay? I see you fell. And they go, oh, yeah, I'm on the floor. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Can you get up? No. If they hadn't had a fall alert, we never would have known they were on the floor. They could have lain there many, many hours. And that's where our death rates come in. It's because they fall and they can't get up. So if you have a senior that slipped down or someone with Parkinson's that freezes and they're on the floor for two or three hours and then something happens and no one knows, they can be there for days. So it's important when you are talking to someone that's thinking about an emergency response, getting an overview of their health and what they need. Most of the time when people call me, they all say, I want to go anywhere button. <laughs> I'm active, I want to go anywhere button. Well, that's great. Probably not what they need most of the time. There are some that do need a go anywhere button. But truly, if they are that active and they have a cell phone and they don't have an ongoing chronic illness, the cell phone will help them. You talked about the, the cell phones having those help buttons and fall detection and Alexa those eventually will work well. I have found, unfortunately, that most people, when they have an accident and they have a cell phone, they never think of using it. Or they don't remember they have to open it up and push one. Even that wonderful watch from Medical Guardian, and I do Medical Guardian, was not my favorite because the little help button on the side, I don't know how many people couldn't find that button when they dropped their glasses and they couldn't see and didn't feel good. So a button has to be something that you can reg touch, feel, press, not feel around, do something, because if you need it in an emergency, it's an emergency. It all looks good on paper unless something's going on. Um, so this was, this is 4G technology. So we are sundowning or sunsetting most of our 3G products. That means that just as our phones are going out, so are our systems, and they have to be upgraded. The new 4G technology, and this is 4G, and this was the first level of 4G, has also changed. So even on these, we have to upgrade them continuously so that those calls don't drop. They're water resistant, but not waterproof. 
So if you have someone that's gonna fall in the shower, they need the in-home close button, just like your phone, your cell phone that you get water in, eventually it won't work. The same thing will happen to this. The other thing is that a lot of people won't wear these in the shower because they're quite a bit bigger if you look at these. Then, fortunately, we have our latest one, and I'm going to press the button on this while I talk to you about it. As you can see, Support center. the light comes on and it's actually letting you know immediately that the call's going through. Then, that pause that you saw was with it getting your GPS location, Wi-Fi, so it knows exactly where you are. MG dealer test shell account. This is Nicholas with Medical Guardian. Do you need any help today? Hello, Nicholas. This is Bonnie. You're actually live in front of about 80 people, and I'm demoing it. No help is needed. Thank you. Perfect. Is there anything I can do for you today? Have a terrific Tuesday. Oh, well, I sure will, as long as you do, okay? Thank you. Thanks so much. Good day. Goodbye. So with this, they were able to get help immediately. They knew where, they would know where we were so they could send help. So if I'm out there walking around and all of a sudden I don't recognize where I am, I can push my button and they can tell me where I am. The other great thing about the mini is you can find your mom or dad. So you call home, they're not there. You go, where's mom? And you see that she's not where she's supposed to be. You can go and find her or send help to her. So it's triangulating with cookies, Wi-Fi, and GPS. Uh, this one, because it's always on, has a five day before you have to charge it. Whereas this one lasts 30 days. So again, when you're looking at what type of device for a person, you have to find out their lifestyle and what they really need it for. If they're not a wanderer and they don't have a, that type of dementia, they may prefer this. However, look at the size difference. Can you see? Quite a bit difference. There's also a price difference. So you might not want the mini if you don't need all the features. They also have belt clips because a lot of people don't want to wear them around their neck. So you can clip them to your belt, your shirt, your wheelchair, your cane, whatever is most comfortable for you. Now I'm going to jump to, oh, and the watch. The 4G watch is coming out also. They've corrected, this one is the 4G, but they've already corrected the problem with the button that I was talking to you about the side button. It's going to have it so that on the face, just when you go by it, it will go off. So they made the correction. That's coming out very soon. Now this is the med ready. There are many different types of medicine dispensers. Um, the best one is if they can't see the medicines. Because as soon as they see medicines, they, they get confused. Did I take them? Should I take them? What are those? Why are there so many medicines? So we don't want that questioning. Also, do you see any buttons or anything they can do wrong on this? No, there's nothing there. So when it's time, and it's, it's a clock. People are used to clocks. So they can see what time it is. Now on this, when it's time for their medicine, and I'll let you hear what it sounds like. It's not something that they're going to walk away from. The noise, if I can use the key, it makes a noise so they are alert that it's time to take the medicine. That's very funny for me. And if they don't take the medicine, the first thing it's going to do is call their cell phone. Then once it calls the cell phone, if you don't answer, it's going to text your responders. So your responders know that mom has missed or dad has missed their medicine. It can also text you. We have found that many times people aren't looking at their phones or don't answer their phones until hours later, but they are going to look for a text. So when it's time to take the medicine, That will continue for 20 minutes. So even if they're sleeping, they're going to eventually wake up. It's very easy to load for someone. It holds 28 doses, not 28 pills, 28 doses. And you can have up to eight to 10 tablets per dose. 
You can also have spare trays. So if you're going out of town and you want a caregiver to drop the second tray in, it's very easy for them. You can remote change the time. So if your mom isn't getting up at 7.30 anymore, you can change that time to eight o'clock. So it's always changing for their needs. I don't want to keep any more time because I know we're running late already. Uh, if you have any questions, just call me. I don't sell, but I do sell them. But you are always welcome to ask me any and all questions. I'm done. Thank you. Next slide, please. Our next speaker is Ms. Susan Rogers, and she is with McNair Dallas Law. And Susan is going to share some information with us about the grant pad and how it can help our caregivers. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to start with a disclaimer. I have no affiliation with GrandPad other than being a customer. Um, and we have been using it for uh, just about a month now. Uh, our situation was my, I have one brother, he lives in St. Petersburg, Florida, and my dad lives about 20 minutes from him. My dad is 81, and he lives in a 55 plus senior community, independent living. He has a history of having a stroke, so he has some um, mobility um, risks for falls. Uh, he does use a cane. Um, not just to poke people, um, but sometimes properly. Um, and, and so what happened with this, uh, the, with the pandemic and, and with the social isolation was, you know, the people that he used to associate with in his senior community were all isolating in their rooms. And his routine was to go out shopping, go walking every day at the beach, um, go out to eat, and, and those things closed down and he wasn't able to, to do those things. And he was really starting to feel um, that isolation. Even though my brother lives across town and they would see each other a couple of times a week, it wasn't enough. My dad wasn't getting the daily interaction. He would, we would call and talk on the phone, um, but it, it just wasn't the same. And so what we, what we observed was that he started making some risky choices and he wasn't wearing his mask and he was going out when he shouldn't be and um, he was trying to walk on the beach when uh, nobody else was around and so the the risks for him were increasing um, and so my brother and I talked and we decided we needed to do something to help boost his socialization and so we thought mm, let's get him some sort of a tablet that would be bigger than his phone he uses a smartphone to surf the internet and to do email, um, but that was it. He didn't know how to video call or, or anything like that. So can we go to the next slide? So we did some research and some of the products that have been mentioned, um, we kind of looked at and ruled out because they didn't quite have the features that we wanted. We wanted something that was easy to use, something that we could monitor that would have an app that we could kind of see how he was doing, something that would change as his needs changed over time. So if he developed some dementia or other issues where he wasn't able to fully use it, could it be adapted more for his use? Um, so we discounted or, or um, kind of decided the iPad wasn't for us and, and some of these other devices. So go ahead and, and switch to the next slide, please. And so we, we discovered this grand pad and it had a lot of the features that we were looking for. Um, so it had an easy display for him to use. He just pushes a button. It has a simple icon. It has music built in, which he really enjoys. There's some games, solitaire, blackjack, different things he can play easily. He can email us back and forth. We were able to set it up through the app so that he's got our email addresses easily accessible. There he can just push a button. Um, internet browsing has a feature where we can control um, as much as we want or as little as we want of his internet access. So my brother thought, oh gosh, we've got to, like, he's getting on some sites that are a little bit out there politically, we need to control that. And I was like, no, no, he's an adult. He can make his own decisions. We're going to let him surf the net. 
you know, where he wants to go. And so it has that ability that if he, you know, if that was too much for him to manage, we could certainly curtail that. And we were able to put some links in where, or buttons in where he could easily get to his New York Yankees and other things that are really important to him. Um, and then the other thing we loved was the photos, that we were able to upload photos so that he can see pictures of what the boys and I are doing or what my brother and his family are doing, and we can share that back and forth. Go ahead and um, go to the next slide. Um, so this is a screenshot from, um, from, my, from, his, from my app of his grand pad. And so these are some of the pictures and videos that we've been able to upload. And we can put a little description in there. And um, it's just so easy. You just push a button, we take the video, it goes directly to him. My brother can see it as well. Um, and then he can respond on that and like it or whatnot. But it's easy for him to see. It's easy for him to scroll through. I put some current pictures on there, but also some older pictures of him when he was younger, things that he might enjoy seeing. Next slide, please. So this is a picture, a stock photo of kind of what the app looks like and the size of it. Um, so you can kind of see this is the music function there and you can kind of see the volume controls are easy. You can um, have as many or as few of the music channels on there as you want. It's sort of like um, Pandora where you would have like um, you might have show tunes or country music or whatever, and it'll go through a playlist of those kind of, of music choices. Next slide, please. And so, like I said, one of the things that we really loved about it was this companion app. So my brother and I both are um, admin users on it, and we can monitor um, kind of is my dad getting on every day? What is he doing when he's on? I've got it right here, and it shows me that... Um, that he has been listening to music the most, secondly, um, on the internet, and then thirdly, playing blackjack. And then it gives me a map that shows me, or a calendar rather, that shows me how much he's been on. So I can kind of see and monitor that. Is it working? Is he having trouble um, and whatnot? Go ahead to the next slide. And so this is the calendar where it shows me the light green are days that he's been on a little bit and then um, and then the darker green is when what they consider is he's been having you know a higher usage that day and if it's white then he hasn't been on it that day. So it kind of gives us an idea of what he's been doing and how often he's been using it. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, the other thing that we really liked about it is that it has support both for us as the admins using the caregiver app and for my dad if he has trouble. So um, the setup was pretty easy, um, but I think there was one or two questions my brother had and they were pretty responsive to that. My dad hasn't had any trouble at all so far using it. It does um, actually go to the next slide and you can see in the picture it sits in this um, kind of cradle they call it, where it sits up and that charges it. So he doesn't have to worry about plugging it in or anything like that. It does have a stylus also. I um, mean, you can kind of see the big buttons there. Um, it is um, provided by Consumer Cellular. And so they provide the internet and phone accesses all, all through the Consumer Cellular. Um, you, and so what we did was we did the buy the device, which was $250, and then there's a $40 monthly service fee. And so we paid for that, and, um, and then we have that support available to us, and, um, and, and so that's been really helpful. Um, I had a question, I think, from Tavis, and he was asking about email and what kind of controls we have for that. So, um, the device, the grand pad, provides an, an email address and a phone number specific for the device. And so what we've done is we've all um, connected to that email and, um, and that phone number. And so we're connected back and forth with that. Now, I believe that he can link his old email address to this device if he wants to have those emails forwarded to this device, or if 
Um, if we want to um, kind of control that a little bit more, you cannot do that. And then the only people who can email him are the people that we have entered the email addresses in and kind of connected them. The same thing with the phone calls. So it's a special number that we can access and, um, and people from the outside can't call in. So I have, so I, like I said, we've been using it for about a month. And um, at first he was, a, he was like, on the face of it, he was saying, oh, thanks for this, um, but I think was a little reluctant. Um, but we've been seeing him use it more and more. And yesterday, I was super excited. He video called me, and I was so excited to see that he was using it and doing it. And he was so excited to see me and to see the boys. And we got to see his cat, and he was so excited to show us the cat and um, the view out his window and everything. And he'd never been able to do that before with his phone or any other device. So um, I was so excited to see him embrace that, and it really helped us connect. And so, again, I have no connection with this. I'm not an expert. I just know that for the past month, this has been a really good solution for us to help with that social isolation and to help us feel more connected and have that face-to-face -face interaction. Go ahead to the next slide and I'll turn it over to the next person. Thank you, Susan, for sharing how it's helped his psychosocial needs be met. So really appreciate that. And I'm sure it's helped your family meet their needs as well, and you as well, and your brother. And so next, we're going to talk to uh, Miss Randy Bailey, and she is with Senderive. They are a new company, and they are based in Texas here. And Brandy, do you want to go ahead and tell us how Senderide is benefiting caregivers? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me today. I am really excited to be here and to be learning um, with all of you about some of these great technology platforms that are really supporting independence for those that are aging in place. Um, absolutely, it's my passion and my priority to um, ensure that older adults have the opportunity to age in place in their homes with dignity. It definitely includes empowering our caregivers and our adults with many of the solutions that you guys have shared with us today. So what I'm hoping to share with you next is another technology platform that's similar to some of the other options is about keeping us safer at home, but also will empower uh, you or your um, older adult that uh, for whom you're caring, that they will also have the opportunity to get out into the community when it is needed uh, in a very safe and effective way. Can we please go to the next slide? So Cinderide is a technology platform. We are a software as a service vendor. So first and foremost, we're a technology platform that is designed to support operations for what we call non-emergent medical transportation services. So just kind of in a, in a brief overview, what that is, is it's transportation to things that are most often important for older adults or vulnerable, uh, otherwise vulnerable individuals. That would include transportation to medical appointments, such as the primary care provider, specialists uh, for group exercise or exercise appointments, and more. Um, additionally, things such as dialysis treatments, wound treatments, physical uh, therapy, occupational therapy, or counseling. Um, sometimes there's injections or surgeries and other procedures that are needed. And additionally, transportation to all of the community needs, such as church, family events, grocery store, and errands. So these are ways that a non-emergent medical transportation provider would be able to support access to the community for both care and uh, psychosocial needs. But additionally, Senderite is a technology platform that also allows for keeping safer at home by leveraging the platform to schedule delivery of very important things such as medications, documents, groceries, supplies, and more. So this type of a service would enable a caregiver. And when we talk about caregivers, so we know that you know, per research with the AARP, that there are significantly less community caregivers now than ever before. And so we find that where there used to be around 20 informal caregivers per older adult, we now have closer to about seven spread out among family and friends that are able to provide care. 
And many of those caregivers are what we call the sandwich generation, where they are taking care of their own children, as well as trying to take care of that older adult and provide that supportive service. So when we look at how a technology platform that could leverage courier services could be very useful, um, I can just relate to my own situation in life, and as, as many of you I'm sure can for both personal and professional uses, where you're very busy and you're very, you have your own errands to run, job to attend to, children to attend to, yet you need to make sure that the older adult is able to access the things that they need. And that courier service could be a way to execute that and minimize time. Um, if it's the older adult scheduling themselves, again, on that technology platform, it gives them the freedom to be safer at home through the time of COVID to reduce their risk of infection and, again, still ensure that they get those services. Next slide, please. So a little more about the Send a Ride platform. So our program was designed by a healthcare attorney. So of course, HIPAA is definitely in our DNA. Everything is designed to be HIPAA compliant and allows for 100% transparency. Uh, what I love about this feature is that when you have someone that is vulnerable, that is receiving a ride, we have to be very cautious because they are, um, again, the much more vulnerable to um, anything that could happen or could go wrong. So you can actually watch the route on the technology dashboard. And so as the person scheduling the ride, I could schedule the ride for a loved one or for a senior for whom I'm providing care in a professional capacity. I could watch that ride unfold on the dashboard so I know exactly where they are at all times. That allows also total control. Communications can be shared directly with the driver or the care partner before, during, and after the ride. So that once again allows for that total transparency, total collaboration, and control. And I think perhaps one of the most innovative things that was developed along with this unique technology platform is that the ride is completely recorded from start to finish. And this technology that's built into the platform is unable to be turned off or manipulated in any way by the driver or the care partner. So that allows for a really nice peace of mind while older adults or other vulnerable individuals are in this Kathleen, can you hear me? Yeah, I can't hear Brandy anymore. Yeah, yeah, I think we've she's lost her internet connection or something. She's oh, Brandy, can you hear us? Yeah, I think. Hey, you can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead and continue. Okay. Uh, can we please go to the next slide, please? I, I do apologize if I'm having internet difficulties. I am away from the office today. I am on a family vacation, but it was really important for me to be here to give this presentation because as we've heard several presenters share, right now vacations and respites and breaks are not something caregivers are getting because of COVID. And so all of these technology options are so important to ensure that we are empowering them with as much as we can so that they can have those little breaks where it's possible. Um, so with that being said, just continuing forward in regards to sharing the innovative technical platform for Send a Ride. Um, additional features that are really important is it again gives control to whomever is scheduling the rides and there can be certain requirements that they can require of the care partners in order to be able to provide that ride either to their loved one or to their professional clients. So we have many different options that are available that include sensitivity training, additional levels of security over and beyond the basic levels of security. So that basic level of security would include an OIG check, which those of us that are professional caregivers would know that that's synonymous with the Medicare exclusionary list. And um, we also would do a seven year criminal offender and sex offender background check. So these additional things that could be offered in addition to that, just based on that person or that professional who is scheduling their comfort level would be fingerprinting, physical exam, 
to be TB tested, first aid training, and CPR training. And so I think those are really wonderful. And what's great about the technology platform is it allows us to toggle them on and off per care partner so that it perfectly aligns the care partner with the services that are being requested. So when someone goes into the technology platform to schedule a ride and they have selected that these are the features that are important for them, then that will allow the care partner to be appropriately matched to, for the safe delivery of those services. So additional things include automatic um, Additional things would be the analytics that are available for um, those of us that are scheduling the rides. We can pull reporting through the dashboard that would allow us to monitor how many miles are being driven, where the destinations are. So this would be great from both an individual but also from a professional use in regards to measuring utilization of this type of a service. Um, from a personal use, if this were something where you were allowing uh, your loved one to schedule appointments and you wanted to go in and monitor where they were going. Again, it, it, the whole program and the whole platform is designed to give transparency, security, and comfort and ease of use to those that are scheduling the rides. Next slide, please. So not spending a lot of time on here because I know we are running short on time and I want to be respectful of everyone's time allowed about the technology platform which is really key for send a ride and what creates this software as a service solution just some additional things that are very high level that are also provided would be that true door-to-door -door service versus curb to curb which is again important for older adults that perhaps have ambulation or mobility concerns uh, superior patient experience um, and industry leader training for those drivers uh, whom are called care partners. Next slide, please. So all of the technology that has been built in to create the foundation, which is Cinderide, allows for a transportation and a courier service that is specifically designed to enable older adults to live safely in the community and to provide ease of use both for the older adult and or for the child or loved one or caregiver that might be helping to schedule those rides. So again, I'm just wanting to share a little bit about the technology services for Cinderide and how those could be utilized to provide for psychosocial well-being, access to health care, and access to community services. If you have any questions about how Cinderide might be more effective in a certain situation or anything else about how it works, feel free to reach out. I'd be glad to, to discuss individually. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. For so it's time for our question and answer. We only have a couple of minutes. We have quite a few questions and we'll try to address them very quickly and with short answers. Maybe before you leave, um, there is one question for Send a Ride and that question, of course, now it's disappeared, but they wanted to know your service area um, and the average cost of your rides. Yes, absolutely. So just on a very high level, the ride cost would depend on how far the senior is traveling. Um, but our service area is uh, we are servicing all of the Dallas Fort Worth metro area, San Antonio, Houston, Austin and Decatur um, about to launch in Lubbock within a very short period of time, as well as Oklahoma City, Tulsa and North Carolina and Florida. So growing fast. Perfect. And is it a contract service or an on-demand service? It can be both. So we work on a contract basis with organizations who want to leverage our services to enable their clients to get to and from the needed services. We also work individually with families and seniors as needed. The majority of our clients are organizational that are utilizing this in a professional capacity to streamline transitions of care and access to services. Awesome. Thank you so much. It can be both. Thank you. And um, Tavis, I know that there was a number of questions for telecom. Do you want to address those quickly for us as well? Yeah, I think I can address uh, Alicia, Alicia's, Carol, Cheryl, and uh, all in one answer. 
Um, you were asking questions about the telecom service about replacing the current service or add on. So telecom's landline service is a replacement to the current phone service. It's available now, but our telecom mobile uh, won't be available until later this year. Uh, telecom mobile will be able to be used with an existing cellular account, but it will require the purchase of our dementia friendly smartphone to work. And there will be a small monthly charge to go with that service itself, but it can be an add on to your, to your existing cellular account. Uh, the other question was from Mary uh, Worstel about uh, tech devices for hearing impaired. Um, you know, so I'm an iPhone user, uh, and my, so is my family. Uh, Petrolex, P-E-T-R-A-L-E-X for iPhone is great as a stand-in if the hearing aid is damaged or lost. Uh, it can be a replacement. You put on some headphones and you use your iPhone as a hearing aid. Uh, also, uh, uh, it's an app called App My Ear uh, for iPhone and iPad will listen and transcribe to a personal conversation. So it's like closed caption for a live conversation you're having with somebody for uh, great for hearing impaired as well. So hope that helps. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have for our questions today. I want to thank all of our panelists. Um, Tavis Schriefer with Telecom, Sean with BrioCare, Bonnie with Family Care Services, Susan with McNair Dallas Law, and Brandy with Senderai. I also want to thank Marty with the Area Agency on Aging of North Central Texas for helping to host us here today. Um, I'm Kathleen with Seniors Blue Book, and I also want to let you all know that I did post the link to, uh, for the evaluation on the Seniors Blue Book website where we've got the handouts. We have that link. I will also later today post the email address for each of our panelists so that if you have additional questions that we didn't have an opportunity to answer today, you're able to contact them to ask those. And then we also will be posting the video for today's event on there as well. So you'll be able to look back and revisit today's event. Marty and I will be coordinating a monthly series, so be watching for additional invitations, share them with your friends. We're trying to make it that it's not only about the Dallas area, but obviously Dallas is a huge focus, but all of the companies that you heard from today are able to service a, a much greater area, some of them even nationally. So I thank you all for attending and for being here today. Um, and thank you on behalf of SBB University, the Area Agency on Aging, and Seniors Blue Book. I'm Kathleen. Thanks. Thank you.